Advanced Frontier added new Camp Cretaceous attractions with the Tabasaurus DLC or something else. Welcome back dinosaur members to Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm the talking T-Rex and in this episode we are back in the showcase in park where we're going to showcase the entire new episode 8 and wow that lady actually scared me there. That was announcement in my ear. So sorry. That was... <laughs> She was like, you gotta release the dinosaurs already. Yes, Frontier, thank you so much for granting me early access. We're going to showcase the four new dinosaurs. There we go, both hands up for the Congvenator, Gigantoraptor, Tarbosaurus, and Utah Raptor, which are, of course, the new dinosaurs that came with the new DLC. Universal and, of course, Frontier have introduced one of the best decoration items to this day in this game and introducing the one and only trash can and trash bins these are amazing decorations i can't believe people were high for this and why is this a thing am i the only one that's looking at these like uh okay so there you go, apparently they had thousands of requests for to add this into the game, which I find very odd. Um, I don't know what's precisely exciting about this, because there's n you can't interact. You, it's like when someone asks me, can you take out the trash? I don't have the most thrilled uh, <laughs> reaction about that, so I don't know whether people want this in the game, but apparently uh, a lot of people wanted to. So, yeah, that's now in the game for the people who want that. I have definitely mixed feelings about that, I'm being honest here. Uh, moving on to hopefully something better, which are bench decorations, so uh, actual guests cannot interact with them. So they can sit on them or lie down on the sunbed, for example. They're just there, so it's a bit of a bummer that guests uh, can't, like, interact with them, although they would all course also requires some animations to of course sit on them and etc and then moving on we have some new flags then we have yeah with new like borders around them this is the art for them so that's the t-rex viewing log we have right there we also have one with a t-rex and stegosaurus looking up at so, uh, like an aviary thing like that or something in Jurassic Park decoration. I feel like that tree house, that wooden tree house, but I guess that's not it because it's not in the game. And then we have a new Mosasaurus banners. We see the underwater viewing dome right there. So that's it. Um, not the most uh, exciting free update yet after the golden statue of John Hammond, which was, of course, paying tribute to the one and only who created Jurassic Park to begin with, of course. But I feel like there's something missing if I'm being honest there. I was expecting some crazy Camp Cretaceous, a new gate, of course, from the Hidden Adventure Netflix series and like playable feature, and uh, some new fences, of course, that we've seen in those concept arts. And if you've played it or watched it uh, from that one episode with the Tarbosaurus featuring, of course, also in this DLC, what I really wanted was a roller coaster. Frontier is literally known. To have created one of the biggest roller coaster tycoon games, and they don't have any attractions for that in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Any of it. If you go to the attractions, literally it's viewing, of course, galleries, zip lines, which is still great, and then more for the lagoon. The classic Jurassic World tools and etc. The viewing log, the amphitheater, and that's pretty much. If there aren't any classic attractions like the Jurassic Park balloons uh, you had in Operation Genesis, not even a roller coaster. I know we have the monorail we see right here, but that you can't do anything apart from mods, of course, where you can adjust the height with them. This is just that like stable level. You don't have any. You don't have a real roller coaster with loopings that you've seen throughout the episode, which I thought would be pretty cool to have as an attraction in, of course, a DLC. Maybe a future hidden adventure Camp Cretaceous second part DLC will uh, come with 
Smilodon, and the Cenozoics that we all hoped would be in this um, pack. Not to go fully downhill with this DLC, but of course, not every DLC can be the, topping the, the previous one. There's bound to be a sort of, a, I don't want to say disappointment, but less excitement level from the previous one. And, of course, I really appreciate everything what Frontier's uh, team is doing with Universal and how they're um, improving the game um, each uh, with each update. But this one definitely has its ups and downs with creativity. And I feel like adding, like, a massive roller coaster and, like, the new tour with the animatronics. You could have even introduced a new fountain that was also in the Netflix series, the, the love source for the ones that know, that spit like water every time a human walks next to it, like a sensor. That would have been at least the thing you could add <laughs> with even new shops that were in like that little area throughout the episodes new shops new attractions uh, anything what they already made for their other games so spoiler alert that's not in this dlc but we're getting into the good stuff here we go the dinosaur so we're going to see what they can do, their database, their animations, and I'm going to release them already with their max batch. So starting off with the Congvenator. With mixed skin patterns, of course. So there we go. Wow, look at those. The, well, three out of four paleo accurate looking dinosaurs once again which has its pros and cons once again. I really like that they're introducing more paleo accurate dinosaurs to this franchise. However, they're kind of going against their own principle um, with the trademark being Jurassic Park and World. Jurassic Park and World has been known to have inaccurate dinosaur models, which some fans, of course, uh, don't mind, but also other people do because they prefer the paleo accurate dinosaurs however i don't have any uh, problem with these because these look fantastic look at the models i love them wow congominator in this uh, game so why is that a little bit of a con on my personal list here's why we and me <laughs> i guess the most we're hoping for some more exciting creatures that kind of relate to the franchise and what a lot of people also want for example Cenozoi creatures which already have been introduced in the Jurassic World canon franchise which is the Smilodon from Camp Cretaceous as well along with the woolly mammoth, a woolly rhinoceros, a big sloth, the mammotherium, Titanoboa, we still want Megalodon so they're all creatures that um, sadly, this winter season, which would fit perfectly, are not being introduced. There's always next year. However, seeing how this game is headed down a specific path, I'm not too certain anymore that's going to happen. However, I do not work at Frontier, so maybe they have work in this behind the scenes, but I'm also not saying they are. But speculating... I'm not too sure that's ever going to in be introduced. Maybe in Jurassic World Evolution 3. However, they're of course following probably someone at Universal telling them what to do. That's a little bit of a speculation as well. But if not, the Cenozoic has been introduced here. I doubt that they would introduce it in the summer, which doesn't suit it. Um, very good. But anyways, so that's what I was personally hoping for, but this pack is just generally great. It's new dinosaurs, you can't complain, they're awesome looking, um, with unique animations that we're about to see as well. So, the talking T-Rex stop rambling on, and let's release the Gigantoraptor. <laughs> Congovenator trying to steal the spotlight there. I would have wanted that on my play on Thanksgiving. Look at that. Four beautiful oversized prehistoric turkeys. That not being the fairy Xenosaurus being released. And wow, look at these colors. They look great. I love the blue as well. Oh, look at that. 
Oh, the Kongominator is already locking eyes with the Gigantoraptor. Yeah, this is already going to be a little bit of a confrontation. Oh, an immediate kick, and it is out. Instant kill. Well, I'm trying to actually enjoy the Kongominator. It's just longer than five minutes, Gigantoraptor, so... I think we need to introduce some more raptors before we release the Tarbosaurus. So here we go. We have the Utah Raptors, which will bring a little bit of a balance. But wow, look at that. The other one just, <laughs> just left. And Velociraptor sounds. Okay. Whoa, look at that. Oh, what? <laughs> the savior is here. Look at that. Gigantoraptor, thank you! You saved the Utah Raptor. For the ones that don't know, every time when I release raptors in this park and enclosure, the Jeeps um, tend to run them over. Oh! <laughs> Twice every time. Look at that. Oh my god! Look at it go! <laughs> oh, oh, the splat! <laughs> Thank God that Kongovenator is already dead. Oh my word. Yeah, get out of here. If you want to live, you mu must go faster. Wow, that actually saved the Utah Raptor from being, well, <laughs> being a uh, bumper sticker on that Jeep. All the new feather dinosaurs are being introduced. I like it. The looks are oh, so... Look at the feathers. I can't deny they don't look good. Oh, look at that. Those are beautiful. Especially with this uh, color pattern with the red and gray. This is awesome. That is pretty cool We see the Gigantoraptor um, Can eat actual both so it's an omnivore that can eat meat as we can see right there And we have another Kongovenator fight against That's not really a fight. It's just more of a uh, I want to get rid of you <laughs> type of interaction So here we go the Camp Cretaceous Tarbosaurus being released. Literally, that's the skin for it. But there's a second one. A plot twist. Oh, that's amazing. So there we go. The Camp Cretaceous Tarbosaurus. Absolutely beautiful. Now that's of course not Paleo Acre, it's the one out of the fourth ones. That's following, yeah, the Camp Cretaceous model. So there you have it. And here, for the ones that want to read it, uh, pause the video, read the database if you want to read through it. So there you have it. Um, it doesn't have the Camp Cretaceous logo on the bottom right. That's missing it because if we go to Scorpius Rex, it does have it. Where is Scorpius Rex? Scorpius Rex, I saw you. There we go. See, Camp Cretaceous on the bottom right. So that's a little bit of a miss, but. Probably they'll add it in the future. Well, I do want to see this fight, and that's what this is all about. Utahraptor versus Tarbosaurus and Gigantoraptor versus Gigantoraptor. And, oh, that would, probably was like an instant bite death. So here we go, two species. Look at that. Oh, a kick. A beautiful kick by the Gigantoraptor there. I get interrupted because the Tarbosaurus skin is inaccurate. If we go to the Tarbosaurus in a minute, this is inaccurate because the Hidden Adventure episode was, well, taking place after 2015, not when Dominion was taking place. So there you go. They're backing down the Tarbosaurus, is challenging the Utah Raptor. <laughs> the Gigantoraptor is just spectating in the background there. Let's speed it up just by a bit so they go full out in their confrontation and actually commit. There is no maximum, like, uh, combat frequency yet, which I was really hoping for once again. But here they go. This is going to be an instant kill. Yeah, there we go. Youth Raptor. Zero extra added uh, modifications, by the way. These are just the default ones. So, Tarbosaurus is really trying to take over this enclosure. You now also have the Automate Bay. When begin automation, you have Automate the creation of set amount of this species. Once released, the bay will keep track of the released dinosaurs and main uh, the local population. So, you can airlift them, the gate auto confirmation so there you go cost per egg of course we're in a sandbox so it doesn't really count for us incubating and let's see what will happen whoa it just touched the that utah raptor and it took flight there you go <laughs> immediately took flight 
And that Jeep really got Southern at, yeah, is being released from the hatchery. There you go. So you don't have to be in control anymore of constantly clicking the hatchery, which is pretty good. So we've got a new Congovenator, Top Source versus Utah Raptor. I was just making the Utah Raptors extinct. Well, okay. Anyways, going to the Utah Raptor, we still need to check its database. So there you go. Pause the screen if you want to. So there is the Utah Raptor. Moving on to the Giganto Raptor View database entry. There you have it as well. Beautiful, along with hearing its sound effects. And last but not least, we have the Concavenator database right here. Pause the screen once again if you want to read it. You're welcome. So now we're probably moving on to the breakout session of this episode. Let's see, of course, how they are. Oh, automated Concavenator. Another one. Two of them are being released. So that's how that works. This one's running straight to the open there. The humans are kind of panicking already. The Giganto Raptors, I'm waiting for them to make their turn and run. Let's see if they, well, which dinosaurs can actually interact with humans throughout the park. So there we go. That one's going on a rampage. We see there going on the outside, not actually hunting down any humans. Um, there's a Utah Raptor finding its way. Oh, this one's going on rampage. Danger to guests. Yeah, it's running. He's like <laughs> about to take flight with that stance. He's like, look at me go. Look how fast I'm going and taking out any humans. Whoa, avoiding them oh, apart from that guy. Oh, so sorry about that. But it is fast. Look at it go. Going to ram the Jeep. Yep, there you go. Tarbosaurus ramming the Jeep. Here we see a Tarbosaurus hunting down a human. Oh, yeah, that's got to hurt. Kind of misses it, like I mentioned in the actual dedicated showcase episode for Tarbosaurus. Kind of misses the kids there. I like how that's a little tribute to the actual show. But I really hope in the future Frontier will add more uh, human attractions as well that maybe can even interact with dinosaurs, like the Tarbosaurus breaking the roller coaster in order to grab, uh, trying to grab the kids, of course. So there we go, Congovenator. Oh, slabbing the human against the ground there oh brutal brutal did you see that jeep yeah don't ram this one <laughs> however we are not done showcasing the new update because unlike new creatures new variants also got added for the already existing dinosaurs starting with of course the pterosaurs we have some new dominion dimorphodon additions to this game where they now have of course the hair on their back with new skins as you can see and since the first installment we missed the Jurassic Park 3 Tanadons look at that now getting their models and new colors as well absolutely Beautiful. That is nice though. That is Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, related. Now moving on to the actual dinosaur variants, such as the Jurassic Park 3, just like the Pteranodon, Brachiosaurus. Now with their model getting new colors and beautiful skins, which is nice though. It's just miss missing some balloons up top to get that sky view. But there you have it. Look at that. Now that is pretty nice and with that the lost world 1997 stegosaurus getting some new colors moving on to the final one is allosaurus finishing off strong there gotta say that is pretty cool seeing the new adult model for the allosaurus with some new beautiful updated skins plus if we go into capture mode we can set different times of the day as you can see dusk dawn night and of course default with the weather depending on which map you are playing on so now i can conquer a rainstorm as you can see the weather is changing and i feel like now i should <laughs> start talking louder and on of course snow maps you can uh, summon snow and etc and the environment of course adapts to the weather in the capture mode so now it's just a beautiful of course common storm on jurassic park 
we see right there. But if we go out of the capture mode, everything will quickly return back to normal. And there you go, the weather changes, the rain stops, and the sun shines on us again hopefully for the next update as well so that pretty much concludes update 8 and the new dlc let me know what you think of this free update along with the dlc of course down in the comments box below what do you really like about this update and what do you think could be added in the future to make this game even better because we love to see this game thrive for many more years so yeah leave a comment down below and make sure to of course stomp your top source foot on that subscribe and bell button if you want to get notified for more Jurassic World Evolution 2 content on the channel make sure to like the video to of course let Frontier know that they've done a good job as well <laughs> so that's always very nice I hope all of you lovely park managers are going to have a great and I saw you lovely dinosaur members in the next episode goodbye the talking T-Rex out.